Hello, out there in Facebook land. We're going to go ahead and get started here in a, in a minute. I uh, just want to share this a few times. Uh, so let me go ahead and tag this. Uh, let's see if I can make this work again. Edit. And the daily bark. That daily bark. Bueno, 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 bueno. And e, e mas e. Beautiful. Bam. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to look at a beautiful painting today because today is National Peace Day or International Peace Day. And, um, and since today is International Peace Day, I am going to do a, uh, analyze a painting about peace. It's actually from a mural... I don't know how to pronounce the first guy's name, but his last name is Vetter. I think it's uh, Ihu, um, Ilihu, Ilihu Vetter, something like that. Uh, he was an American illustrator, um, painter, muralist. He was a poet, uh, pretty cool guy. And his work is uh, absolutely gorgeous stuff. So we're gonna take a look at his work. <clears throat> And if you guys can share this with your community, if you come on here, please hit the share uh, link so it goes out on your page. Other people can watch it, enjoy it, um, show a little love. Little uh, Since it is International Peace Day, a lot of hearts would uh, be wonderful because then you get the little heart explosion, which is really kind of cool. So um, do love it, like it, share it, and uh, let's get into the analysis. Let's put on our Indiana Jones hat <laughs> and get into the, the, readers, the readers of the lost art of composition. So let's take a look at this painting. Well, here is the original painting, the mural. Really pretty. It's actually, um, a whole, there's a whole series of these paintings, uh, but we're gonna look at this detail with inside the, this entire mural. And let me just see something here. Okay, very cool. So what we have, we're just looking at a couple of the nouns inside the, of this image to begin with. We have two guys on the side. One's uh, uh, making some vases. He's painting up some vases and other ones uh, planting a tree and we have this naked chick in the middle now who is the naked chick I really don't know who she is she's probably some type of divine presence maybe a muse of some sort um, what I don't like to do is to go and read uh, the writings about paintings I, I'd rather spend the time with the de with the design first and let the design speak to me and then go research what the painting's about. So that way I know if the artist was successful or not. Uh, I'm sure there's a name for this woman, uh, for this divine presence, um, you know, maybe like justice or whatever. Uh, she might be peace, okay? Because the, the name of this painting is called Peace and Prosperity. Um, but let's go ahead and look at the design and see what it tells us about, the, about this painting. Uh, off the bat, when you look at it, you would think that both of these guys are equal because they're both on each side of this uh, dividing figure, very similar to uh, a balanced scale or maybe King Solomon with the two ladies and the babies. Um, and so you would look at the trees on each side, uh, 
the the shape that the tree behind her makes, the fact that the laurel reefs or the, or the reefs are on both sides, uh, that her throne that she's sitting on is um, is very symmetrical. So everything seems symmetrical right up front. But then when we start looking at the design of it, we realize this is not as symmetrical as we think. So I am believing that the guy on the left here with the pottery is peace and the guy on the right is prosperity. So what I I'm going to go into the first level of uh, of design. Now if you look at the guy on the right uh, I'm sorry, on the left, who's with the pottery, you can see that he's actually designed in this beautiful movement of circles, right? That the, and he's becoming very introspective. He's he's spending his energy, uh, his time, his effort within, and now he's ultimately creating. He's painting on the on these uh, vases. The fellow on the right hand side, his energy comes into himself and then out. He's looking out. Uh, look at all of the diagonals that are in the tree that he's holding. They're all pointing up to the head of this goddess. So he's, he's outward looking, where the other guy is inward looking. You can see the basis of this design. You see how this curve, if we start at this bottom vase, it swings up through his feet. Uh, the vase that he's sitting on, his butt, up through his arm. It then swings back around up through his back, through the cloak, swinging back up through his arm and his head, coming back through the vase again where the shadow and the, and the highlight is, coming back up through his, the bottom of his hand, up through his hand where the pencil is, up through the vase again. So it's just this beautiful circular motion, right? Because the energy of that uh, figure has to be introspective. It's just this inner uh, cycling of energy, okay? Now the other fella, he's he's uh, he he he's not being introspective. He's being um, what's the word? It's, um, he's looking out, okay? Uh, maybe he's looking to the future. Uh, he's not being present. Um, he's looking for hope. He's looking to that which is to come, okay? He's being aware of his surroundings, his outside of himself. An extroverted type of person. And so his energy, if you look at his body language, uh, look at the, 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 the angles that construct his body, they're much more on a diagonal and they're shooting towards the woman. Can you see that? And then you can see all of these little uh, uh, lines from his fabric, uh, from his clothes, the back of the trees, even the branches in the trees. They're all moving us, moving that eye up towards the woman. Now, if we look at this neat little arabesque that's flowing through here, what we find is that uh, it comes up above the guy's uh, shoulder and his... Uh, his clothes it comes down up underneath his hands you can see it flowing through the the way that the the vegetation the, the leaves are if you go to the other side you'll see that the leaves are more horizontal but on this side they, they come up in a curve they wrap up around her thigh her leg and you, you just get this this movement which is really nice now what's really really cool is if we go back to the original and let's see if I can do this here. Blow it up. Get in close. Do you see that same arabesque is what the painter is painting on the vase? So the artist is using that flow as a motif. You can see how it's coming right up through her thigh, up through the, the leaves, coming back up through the scarf, or whatever the cloth is, right? 
and it's the same motif, the same movement that he's painting there. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, let me um, bring this back to where it belongs. Okay, cool. Now the next... <clears throat> Now the next uh, element of design is we, is we start to begin to see this curve pulsating out, radiating out across the image. So you can see it being formed in the body of this man on the left, the way his hand and his head and his leg and his feet all align in it. Um, the way that the trees are being formed coming down into it. Obviously the side of this uh, design with the big tree in the background. And her hip comes through some of the garment down into the, uh, the garment on the foot, near the foot. Uh, her arm, again, the leg, the, the toe. Like, there's just this movement, this energy that's pushing through and across this image. If you look at it now, you can begin to see kind of how like the guy on the left becomes the source of this of this vibration that's moving across, okay? When you look at this picture, you you can't imagine that vibration coming from the right to or to the left. But when you see it, boom boom boom. And you take it away, now you can begin to see it coming the other, you can see it, you can feel uh, that vibration coming across that image. Now, there's a reason why uh, the artist did this. Because it's called Peace and Prosperity. And my, th my, my thesis on this, <clears throat> my hypothesis, if you will, is that the artist on the left is peace. The farmer or the guy who's planting the tree on the right is prosperity. Now I find this kind of cool because uh, if you watched the video from yesterday, you'll, you'll remember that uh, the lemon tree in my drawing represented wealth, it represented inheritance. Um, and and so he's bringing this in here to represent prosperity, which also goes into that, uh, that line of thought. And so he's using the tree to also represent that as well. Now, he's using the artist, someone who's expressing themselves, someone who's taken time to, to, to spend time with themselves, not looking for outside stimulus, but having an internal stimulus that then uh, stimuli that then comes out in, in an expression. Um, he's using that to represent this place of peace, or this moment of peace, or this being of peace, or being in peace. And prosperity, he's using the the guy who's actually planting the seeds and growing this uh, little tree. Okay. Now, if we look at the horizontals, again, because we're reading left to right, there's a lot of horizontals that's moving us in this direction as well, from the left to the right. <clears throat> now, what's interesting is, if you look at the areas where the fabric is flowing, the, fl the fabric and the hair all are flowing from the left to the right, it's telling us, again, that the eye is to move from the left to the right, that this invisible wave done in curves, done in uh, horizontal lines, um, is, is radiating, it's pulsating, it's like a wind that's blowing across this image, and it's moving all of the fabric, all of the hair from the left to the right, 
which is basically what I was saying earlier with the horizontals and the uh, curves that are pulsating out. So you can see here. Now at the bottom, what's interesting is two things are happening. Uh, all of these horizontals, which means something's at peace, something's at rest, right? Something is uh, stable. If you notice the vase, the vase falls within side of all of that horizontal thrust. The fellow with the tree, the tree becomes a vertical. It becomes a place where that piece stops, right? So all that energy moves across, and then when it hits that dominant, not the dominant vertical, but that, that, that vertical there, it stops, and then the eye goes up. Okay, so it goes up the tree, and what do we see in the tree? Well, there's nothing there. There's no fruit. There's no uh, leaves. There's nothing there. It, the tree's there, but, but it's not producing anything. When we go to the man who's illustrated as peace, he's actually producing something. So that, there's a, a very interesting um, uh, juxtaposition as well there, okay? So here we go. We can see that he's, being, he's producing something. The other one has not produced. It, it, the tree is barren. Not that it will always be barren. It, it may take time. They have to cultivate it. And so it's going to bud, it's going to have the leaves, and the fruit will come, but it's, it's a process that they have to go through. Where the artist, to have peace, like you can have peace right now, because it, it requires only you. Where prosperity is something that has to be cultivated. It has to be cared for and grown. It requires time, attention, peace exists outside of that. It's an, it's an ever-present as long as you stand in it. It'll always produce as long as you choose to be in it. The prosperity is... It, 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 it hinges upon other things. Now, you can say, well, you're prosperous because you're, you're a person of peace, which actually makes a lot of sense. But um, in terms of our traditional way of thinking of prosperity, it's really um, an outside influence. Um, but again... We, our state of being, um, affects that. And that's what I think is being communicated in this image. That the person of peace is the source of prosperity. So peace comes before the prosperity. Uh, what's interesting is I had lunch, um, or I guess it was dinner, I don't know, maybe about 20 years ago, with uh, a fellow named Felix Carcano. And uh, Felix is a pretty cool cat. Uh, and... Back then, we were doing designs, and uh, I worked for a company where we were doing like t-shirts and, and, and that kind of stuff, but they also had like, an upholstery business, and they got into doing upholstery in yachts, and that's how we met Felix. And so Felix took me out for some pizza one day, and we were talking, and he says, you know, if you want to become really, 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 really wealthy, if you want to become really wealthy... You have to come to a place where you don't fear money. And that has been like something in my mind for a very long time. How do you not fear money? Like, what does that mean? And more recently, I've come to this conclusion that I've been making a huge mistake over the, over the last many, many years. And that is, I've been focusing on not being afraid of money. And when you focus on something that's quote-unquote not, you ultimately... Do it. You do the opposite uh, because the mind doesn't understand not. So if you say, you know, don't do this, your mind's going to only picture you doing it and therefore you actually are thinking about the thing you shouldn't be thinking about. And, uh, and so it, it dawned on me, what's the opposite of the fear of money? It's the peace. It's financial peace. How do you acquire financial peace? How do you acquire uh, peace of mind? with money how do you go into negotiations and have peace that not you're not afraid of losing something you're not afraid of oh my gosh what happens if you win now you can't manage it you know, how do you have peace when it comes to prosperity and that's why i find this image so beautiful 
uh, because it's it's a beautiful illustration of of articulating those things. You have to have peace first, then the prosperity. In that way, you can acquire it. You can you can um, uh, have it. You can uh, manage it. You have access to it. Uh, you can steward it, but only if you have a place of peace. If you try it the other way, if you try to get prosperity so that you can have peace in your life, um, it's it's not going to be it's not going to last. Because now you're looking for external stimuli and situations and all that kind of stuff to kind of uh, govern your inside. And it has to be done from the inside out. So the peace comes first and the prosperity. And so uh, I really like this image because of that. Also, what's interesting is this. When you look down at the, the bottom of this um, throne that she's sitting on, the word peace is fully spelled out. Prosperity isn't. So we can tell that it's prosperity... But what's interesting is the foot cuts it, and so we, we, we only really see the first part of it. We don't see the f entirety of the word. And so uh, it's the same thing with these trees up here. You know, we see the beginning of this prosperity, but we don't see the completion of it. So, there, so that means that it's something that's coming into fulfillment. It's being fulfilled, but the peace itself is done. They already have it. And from there, they're expressing themselves. Uh, from that place of peace, this energy, rest, peace, uh, calmness is being um, exuded. Okay? It's being pulsated. It's coming from this, this place of uh, peace, pulsates out, changing the environment, leading towards prosperity. And then you also have these beautiful arabesques and the different energies of the prosperity and the uh, self-fulfilling peace there. So that's today's uh, analysis. I thought this was a really beautiful little painting. Uh, well, it's not little. You know, it's a big mural. But um, I thought it was a beautiful painting. And the concepts were is it, it, really, really beautiful as well. And today is International Peace Day. So... Uh, that's why I went ahead and grabbed this painting. So I uh, hope you enjoyed, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right? Ciao. Oh, one thing. You almost thought I forgot about it, did you? But I didn't. Um, core 80, Core 80, Core 80. Uh, we're building our Core 80 group, our Core 80 team of composers. Again, uh, we're looking to... Uh, find those who this message resonates, brings them in. Uh, we had a, um, someone reach out to us uh, yesterday, which was a beautiful thing. Uh, and so, please, if, uh, if art is important to you, if story is important to you, if you understand the importance of design and you, and you know that composition is important, then get into the Core 80. Get, uh, get trained. Uh, become part of our group. We meet uh, weekly where we uh, critique and, and give feedback on the work on the projects that we're working on. And we're not going to sit around and talk about, oh, how pretty the, the pink is or whatever. Um, our critiques are um, designed to give you real feedback. Now, we have a lot of fun, but we're extremely serious about composition. And so in those groups... Um, and we keep them small so that so that you get really uh, you get some really specialized attention. You feel safe in that group. Also, we keep them small so that uh, you don't hide. It, it, it's useless just to show up and listen and, and and hang out in the back of the room. So we want you to participate. We want you to um, uh, provide feedback to other people and also receive feedback. Uh, I'll give you one one story. We have um, Michelle in the group, and she's a professional artist for 20 years. Uh, won many awards, all kinds of good stuff like that. And uh, we had one fella, Lewis. It was his first time uh, at the meetup. He did his thrust map project, his assignment. He brought it, and he started sharing with the group on it. And one of the insights that he was uh, talking about was the way that if, if he could curve the people he could actually get a rhythm of the music in the image totally it was an amazing thing 
and uh, and so later on, uh, Michelle and I were looking at one of her paintings, and she said, "Oh man, look at that! If I if I took what Lewis was saying and I just curved these people, I would have gotten like even more rhythm, more 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 music in that painting." And it was a painting of uh, Cuba, because uh, so, she went to Cuba a few months ago and, and did all these paintings. So <clears throat> it doesn't matter how professional you are, or if you're just emerging. Um, the beautiful thing about these meetups is that everybody gets to help each other grow. And so, uh, you know, participate, grow, get feedback, and watch your art just, just skyrocket. It really is a system designed for quantum leap, um, uh, for quantum leaps in growth. You know, I, I'm bold enough to tell people that once you go through our training and you get um, hooked up into the meetups, you're going to grow in a few months what might take someone normal uh 10 years to develop on their own and and, and in my opinion i'm holding that back because honestly i feel uh within six to nine months you're going to grow to a place that would probably take you easily 10 if not 20 years to try to discover on your own so it really is a place for quantum growth it's designed for that and we focus only on composition. We don't get into painting techniques or um, mediums and all that stuff. We want to know, we, we focus on message and we focus on uh, composition. So with the message, that is our storytelling ability. That's uh, the meaning behind the work, why we're painting the work. And then the design and composition is actually how we're telling that story. And once we go through that process, then you can get in, you can bring in your style and your mediums and all that good jazz and, and put that on top. So that's my little uh, spiel about the uh, Core 80 today. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Again, if you have any artists that you like or a painting that you would like me to analyze, please grab the link of that image and put it in the comments so that I can see that and then uh, add that to the schedule. All righty. On that note, arrivederci. Ciao.